Ladies and gentlemen, we are three more sleeps away from week one, where the Giants will take on the Minnesota Vikings at MetLife Stadium at 1 p.m. on Sunday. But on today's show here on Giants Now by Chat Sports, we are going to react to the depth charts that the New York Giants released for that week one game. But first, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. We put out free, informative, entertaining content every single day on the New York Giants. And we are in a subscriber battle with the 0-1 Vikings Now channel here at Chat Sports. We want to beat them on the field, and we also want to beat them in subscribers picked up. So if you love the Giants and you want to start 1-0, smash that sub button. And if you are subbed, hit that like button. Yo, what up, everybody? You're watching Giants Now by Chat Sports. I am your host, Marshall Green. Let's dive into it. I have some takeaways from the depth charts. And I'll just say this. The rookies, they didn't get any love from Giants.com where they, uh, they released these official depth charts. Guys like Tyrone Tracy, Tyler Newbin, Theo Johnson, they were in spots on the depth chart that I don't think that they should have been. We'll talk about them in a second. Let's start with the offense. We will close with the defense. No surprising takeaways here. We know Daniel Jones is going to be the starter. Drew Locke is going to be the backup. And Tommy DeVito will be that third-string quarterback. Hopefully this year we don't ever see Locke. We don't ever see DeVito, and Jones plays well, and he stays healthy, and he helps the Giants potentially get to the playoffs this year. At the running back spot, this was the first position where I saw something that I just don't believe in. Like, yes, these are unofficial depth charts, and there's going to be takeaways and stuff like that, but I'm just going to be honest with you. Tyrone Tracy will have more touches, carries, and receptions than Eric Gray on Sunday against the Vikings. He is the RB2. I don't care what Giants.com says. Eric Gray's RB3. Tyron Tracy is RB2 with Motor Singletary leading the pack. I think he has a big game this weekend against the Vikings. At the receiver spot, I thought this was really interesting as well. Neighbors, we know he is receiver number one. We know Wandale Robinson is going to start in the slot. But at that outside receiver, opposite of Malik Neighbors, they had two names written just like this. Darius Slayton slash Jalen Hyatt. I don't believe that it is a slash situation. Darius Slayton is above Jalen Hyatt on the depth chart. Whether you agree with that or disagree with you, I'm just telling you that's what it's going to be. I want to see Hyatt get more chances. But Slayton has already proved that he is a consistent receiver in this league. And I actually think Slayton could be in store for his best year yet in the National Football League as a lot of attention and a lot of eyeballs are going to be on number one for Big Blue. At the tight end spot, another really shocker for me is Theo Johnson being listed as tight end two. Maybe it's just week one. Maybe it will be for just week two. But at some point during the season, we will see Theo Johnson take over as the starting tight end, and Daniel Bellinger becomes tight end two. Johnson, he's electric, extremely athletic, one of the fastest, strongest tight ends coming out of the draft. I think he was underutilized at Penn State. He's going to do big things for this team, and I love the fact that he's wearing number 84. That was a major win. 47 just was not cutting it. No John Lynch at tight end. We're talking Theo Johnson. 84, love to see it. At the offensive line, no real shocks here. No real surprises either. The guys that we've been talking about being starters for the New York Giants on the offensive line for quite some time are going to be the starters for the Giants. You're going to have Andrew Thomas, John Runyon, John Michael Schmitz, Greg Van Roten, and Jermaine Illuminor as your front five with the backups being Joshua Azudu at the left tackle spot, the UDFA, Jake Kubis, Congrats to him. Congrats, baby. The left guard spot. They also had Greg Van Roten listed as the backup center because Schlotman ended up going on IR. They don't technically have a backup center. Van Roten was working there a little bit in training camp, so he'll be the backup there. And then Aaron Stinney is the right guard backup. And then you have Evan Neal as that backup to Illuminor at that right tackle spot. It's going to be very interesting to see what unfolds and how it plays out with Evan Neal this season. Before we get to the defense, I just want to hear from all the real ones. Who do you got? Who is going to start the season 1-0? I have not thought about this yet, but it just popped in my head as Patrick Seaman is actually producing this video. I think there is a chance we could see a tie. I think there's a chance that week one could actually be a tie, but I'm not trying to live in that world. Who wins week one, NYG or MIN? Sound off for me. Coming up next, we're going to talk about the defense. Tyler Newbin. I think he got a little bit dissed a little bit in these depth charts. I don't know what the word is that I'm trying to say, but I don't like what I saw. Now we're going to talk about it. But coming up, that 
And then this, our proud sponsor, Game Time. Shout out to Game Time for sponsoring today's show. What time is it? It is Game Time. If you're looking for last minute tickets to Giants Vikes this Sunday, the best place you're going to find those are at Game Time. So download the Game Time app, create an account, use that promo code Chat Sports, and get $20 off your first purchase. Game Time is the best ticketing app in the game. You get the lowest price guaranteed. Prices drop as the events get closer. And they have a new feature called Game Time Picks. It's new, and it's a feature that helps you make getting tickets to see your favorite team play live even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. That's why I love Game Time. They do the best job, in my opinion, of looking out for their customers. They're going to make it the best possible deal you can get and you can look through all in pricing features. That way, when you see four tickets are worth 200 bucks, you pay 200 bucks at checkout. You don't get smacked upside the head by $500 in hidden fees. Game time, they're not about that life. They just want to make sure you get the best price guaranteed. So download the Game Time app, create an account, use the promo code CHATSPORTS, C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S, and get $20 off your first purchase where terms do apply. What time is it? Game time. All that information will be clickable down in the comments and description of today's show. No real surprises here on the interior defensive line for Big Blue. You know, Sexy Dexy is going to be that guy holding down the middle with Raheem Nunez Rochez right by his side. And then we will see a rotation of guys be mixed in. DJ Davidson, Jordan Riley, and the UDFA, Elijah Chapman. Excited to see what he does. And my guy still Dre Patterson. You know he's going to get the best out of this group. At the edge department, also no shockers here. Brian Burns, number zero on one side. Kayvon Thibodeau, number five on the other side with Aziz Ojolari, Boogie Basham, and Benton Whitley. Maybe a little bit of a revenge game for Benton Whitley, who was actually cut by the Minnesota Vikings last year. That would break Patrick Seaman's heart. At the inside linebacker spot, Bobby Okereke, the captain of the defense, holding it down there, one of the most underrated players in this league with Micah McFadden by his side. McFadden was a limited participant at practice on Wednesday. I'm expecting him to go. I don't know if he'll play every single snap, but I do expect him to be starting out there with this team. And guys behind him, Carter Coughlin, Curtis Bolton, who comes over after being waived by the Dolphins this offseason, and the rookie Darius Moose out of the sixth round pick out of UCLA. At the corner spot, chalk here as well. Deontay Banks, CB1. CB2, they are listing at Cordell Fly with Drew Phillips in the slot at the nickel position. Trey Hawkins is listed as the backup for Deontay Banks. Nick McLeod listed as the first backup behind Cordell Flott with Adoree Jackson behind him. I think Jackson's going to play. I'm not sure he starts, but I do think we'll probably see 15 to 20 snaps from him. And they have Isaiah Simmons listed as the backup slot corner behind Drew Phillips. Really just the money backer. He's going to be in there on sub packages, especially on passing downs. I don't know if I love seeing him in the slot. I don't really want to see number 19, Garden Jordan Addison, on Sunday. But inside the box, getting downhill, moving quickly, making smart plays. I think Simmons could do that. I worry about him in space and especially in coverage on these shorter, quicker guys. At safety, this was the biggest shock of the depth chart release for me. Tyler Newbin is the starting safety for this team. I don't care if Dane Belton's out there for the first rep. The starting safety for this team going forward is Tyler Newbin with Jason Pinnock by his side. And I don't want to disrespect Dane Belton. That's not what I'm doing. I'm expecting Dane Belton to play a lot. I think there's going to be a lot of three safety set sets as the New York Giants are going to run dime a lot with six DBs on the field. Expect to see Pinnock, Belton, and Newbin all on the field together. But, man, it's Newbin as the starter. I don't know if they just didn't want to include any rookies as starters outside of Malik Neighbors, but this is just not going to be the case. Expect to see 27 and 31 out there more than you see Dane Belton. Predict the score for me in the chat. Predict the score for me in the chat. Who do you got winning? What's the score? Comment for me down below. As I have tweaked my score prediction, still the same winner. I got the Giants winning. But it's now, instead of 21, uh, I had 21, 2016. 20 to 16 was my initial score prediction. I'm changing to 20 to 17. So I think it's going to be 17-17 with a minute 45 left. And Daniel Jones is going to drive the Giants down, and Graham Gano is going to kick a 47-yarder to win the game. Game-winning kick from Graham Gano to get our lick back from when the Vikings, two years ago in the regular season, beat the Giants on a game-winning kickoff, a game-winning field goal. Rolls reversed, 
Giants win. Game winning kick. Graham Gano. Make sure you are following me on social media. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Marshall Green underscore. Hit me up over there and let's go Big Blue.